What's good? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. In this video, we're going to be talking about 20 of some of my go-to tips that are going to help speed up your workflow and help you become a better producer with FL Studio. Before we hop into this video, I wanted to give a quick word for my sponsor, DistroKid. Real quick, I wanted to talk about promo cards by DistroKid. Promo cards are a great way to promote your music on social media. They're also a great way to save yourself time and money so you don't have to outsource to a graphic designer or figure out how to do it yourself. To access promo cards, simply go to your More menu, click Promo Cards, select a song, and instantly have tons of generated images for your social media platforms. To download to your camera roll, just simply click and hold. Then you can upload to your desired platform. If you don't have an account with DistroKid, hit the link down in my description to get 7% off now. Let's hop back into the video. You get me. To copy and paste the plugin with the same settings onto another track, go to this menu drop down, click and hold save preset as, and drag it on top of the mixer track that you want all those settings to be on top of. Let's say we want to delete all the plugins in one mixer track at once. Simply right click, go to file, and hit default. This is going to erase all of the plugins and their settings on that mixer track, but it's going to keep that sound routed to that channel, which is cool. Now next, if you want to keep a plugin on top, and what I mean by that is have it be on top of all these other plugins and playlists, simply right click on that menu, go down to detached, and now anytime you X out of a window behind it or on top of it, it's going to keep that plugin on top. It's great for dual monitor setups and multiple plugin views. To enable the frequency spectrum inside a parametric EQ2, click this drop down menu and enable that spectrum. Keep in mind, this is a newer feature, so you're going to have to update if you don't see this feature inside of parametric EQ2. This view makes it so much easier to see hot frequencies and frequencies that you may need to boost a little bit. Something that really saves me a ton of time and speeds up my workflow is saving my own presets. Let's say we want to get this EQ setting just right and we want to save this for future reference. Just click this top menu in the top left of this plugin, go down to save preset as, name your preset anything you'd like. I'm going to name this EQ filter. I'm going to hit save. Now let's say if we want to bring that preset up, just click the preset menu in the top right, and here you have your preset. The quickest way you can save CPU is by opening up the audio settings, going to resampling quality, and choosing a lower number. Now let's say you want to create an automation clip, but later you want to delete it. So right here we have this automation clip. It's moving throughout the entire frequency spectrum on this EQ. Now let's say we want to delete this. This is usually a really annoying problem that FL Studio has where you can see right here, it doesn't go away. So in order to delete this problem, you can go to current project up in the top left, initialize controls and delete event. Now, as you can see here, it's completely deleted away from your project and you won't have that issue anymore if you want to tweak that EQ and move on from there. Now, let's say we want to create a reverb send or a delay send. All we have to do is choose an empty track. Go ahead and throw on effects plugin. In this case, it's delay three. Make sure you turn that dry knob all the way down. Choose your effects in here. Now you can route any channel to that send track by hitting sidechain to this track or just simply clicking the arrow. Now that you can adjust this level to your liking with that effect on there. Now what I like to do for organizational purposes is I like to take these effect sends and dock them to the right. To right click, go down to dock to, and I choose right. This is going to help a lot with your workflow. It definitely helps me. I like to keep all my sends on the right and buses on the left. Another send or auxiliary tip is throwing an EQ after that effect to help shape and mold that effect and that sound afterwards. To get a nice visual and to be able to see the overall peak of your track and its stereo image, you can open up the Wave Candy on the master channel. It has a whole bunch of different settings here. You can choose whatever you like, save it as a preset. You can see the spectrum view, a meter view. It's pretty cool and really helpful. So if you're messing around on your MIDI controller and you're freestyling and you forget to hit record, don't worry, it's a really easy fix. All you have to do is go up to tools, click dump score log to selected pattern, choose between two and 10 minutes depending on how long you've been playing. Now you can easily take these notes, fine tune them, make your adjustments and keep moving.
One of the last few FL Studio updates, they added this amazing section called pre-computed effects. You can use these knobs inside the sampler to easily shape your sound in any way. One of my favorite features is this boost and clip knob right here. You can easily boost it and add some clipping to your 808s. That's what I use it for the most. In this third tab right here, we can go into the sampler and we can use the built-in delay for quick and easy results. It's got echo and delay and another thing called fat mode. You can mess around with the mod X and mod Y knobs. You can add some ping pong and you can change the timing on that as well. Really convenient and it saves on a lot of CPU because you don't have to add plugins. Next, if you want to change the key of all of your sounds at once, it's pretty simple. Just click drag and highlight all the sounds that are in your channel rack here. Then click this drop down menu and go to transpose selected. If you want to go down in key, you're going to type negative. So negative two here will go down two semitones. And if you want to go up in key, go back to transpose selected and just type in five, for instance. We're going to go up five semitones. Now let's say we want to record some live automation on this parametric EQ2. Very simple. Just go up to the top record button, click on it, and you can choose notes and automation. Now, while it's playing, you can click and drag this and anything that you do to this parameter right here, it's going to record and track that as automation. Once you're done here, you can see that it added it to the pattern. And if you need to change it, you can just double click on the pattern and go to automation and you can fine tune that if you need to. In the parametric EQ2, you can now solo a specific band. Click on the headphone icon and hold shift and left click on the band. And now you can sweep through and solo out that frequency range. If you want to save your own MIDI files or create your own MIDI pack, it's really simple. Just in the piano roll, go up to the top left menu and click file and export as a MIDI file. You can save it to whatever destination you like and easily click and drag those into your channel rack. In the playlist, you can easily make patterns unique to quickly add some variation and originality to your tracks. So let's say we want to slice this pattern here and we want to make one unique and do something specific to that. Just click the drop down menu and hit make unique. Now anything you do to this pattern right here is not going to affect any of the other patterns in that playlist for your beat. If you want to route some sounds into a bus channel, it's really simple. Just click drag and highlight all the sounds that you want routed, go to an empty track and hit route to this track only. Then you can rename it whatever you like, melody bus, drum bus, etc. Bussing your instruments is a great technique that I use all the time. It helps glue your instruments together and if you want an effect on a certain sound or a group of sounds, it really helps speed up that process and it cuts down on CPU as well. In the newer versions of FL Studio, a lot of the stock plugins like the Parametric EQ2, Maximus, etc. are now actually completely resizable, allowing for a smoother, easier workflow and visual. Another cool trick that I do sometimes is I unroute all of my buses from the master channel and route them to a separate empty mixer channel. There you can add some effects like EQ or compression to the master. It'll give it a nice clean sound and you can rename it and call it a pre-master if you will. Well, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions or more suggestions, drop them down in the comments below. And as always, share this with a friend if you get me.